How's it going? This is Tim Crater from Gladiators Academy at Lafayette, and uh, we're with Dustin Poirier. Um, Dustin just returned from a huge uh, three-week trip, went to Hawaii, Guam, and uh, Japan, traveling to different military bases. Um, so uh, tell us what you do out there. We went around to uh, different military bases and did seminars with all the different branches, you know, the Navy, the Marines, the Army, just hit all different bases in Guam, Hawaii, and Japan. You guys teach? Yeah, we did seminars. We did a, we had like six guys, so we each did a, did a section. You know, I did stand-up. Nate Quarry did ground and pound. Tom Lawler did wrestling. Joao Assis did jiu-jitsu. So we just put on an hour-long seminar. There was every level, you know, every aspect of fighting, stand-up, ground, uh, just wrestling, everything. That's awesome. Um, I was in the military for five or six years. Uh, when I was in the military, you know, we didn't have MMA. It wasn't so big back then. And, uh, but I mean, you know, now I can imagine how amazing that would be for guys like Dustin to come in. And, uh, you know, Dustin was only probably home seeing his wife and family for a day or two before you left for another three weeks. So, um, you know, it's an awesome thing to do for the military, support our troops. All you guys overseas watching this, you know, we support you, we love you, come home safe. And uh, that's a pretty cool situation. So, uh, also, Maybe we cover what's going on with this. Uh... So you had your first UFC fight. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Shocking the world. A lot of people kind of were hating, you know. And that's part of success, you know, is uh, haters. You know, if there's nobody hating on what you're doing, you, you ain't doing nothing worth doing. That's just the reality of life, you know. Uh, if you're doing the right things, there's probably going to be some people hating on you. Um, when Dustin got that fight with Grisby, you know, a lot of people were talking a lot of smack about maybe him not deserving such an opportunity, or who was this kid coming out of nowhere and getting a fight with Grisby. I don't think anybody really gave Dustin a chance. I saw a lot of first round submissions and stuff, um, predictions. Um, what, what was the fight, what, what did the fight feel like uh, from your eyes? It felt good, you know, uh, I trained for a hard fight, and, and I, expe I expected it to be a war, you know, so when I got in there and things just kept going my way every round, every time the bell rang and I went to my corner, I just knew I was in charge of the fight, and I just, you know, it went so smooth, everything we trained for, it, it happened, you know, the guillotine defense, the, his, his high kicks, just, my, you know, the, firing right back when he throws those high kicks, everything just went perfect and exactly how we trained, so I just went in there and my body was on autopilot, you know, it was just it, doing what I do in the gym every day. I noticed you, uh, you seem to be able to get off a little bit faster. Your stand-up seemed to be a little bit crisper. Was that mostly because Josh Crispy's not as fat as I am? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I feel great at 145. I feel uh, fast and, you know, maybe got a little bit sloppy with my hands, but every day I'm working on, you know, getting better every fight. So. One of the reasons Dustin gets kind of sloppy sometimes is because he's so intent on hurting people that sometimes he forgets about... <laughs> His technique. But Dustin's a really nice guy in real life. <laughs> she just wants that cage door closes. That white trash comes out. Business. But, um, yeah, you know, it was a great fight. You know, it definitely showcased a lot of your skills. And uh, big props to um, Mr. Lockhart. Um, Four fighters, by fighters. Yeah. George Lockhart. George Lockhart just did an amazing job helping Dustin. Um, we contacted him, me and Rob Rivetta, and uh, definitely did a great job. Dustin was eating, like, uh, two grape leaves. <laughs> A teaspoon of peanut butter and 12 almonds at the movie theater with my wife and I and his wife. It was just completely ridiculous. But, you know, it was very successful. That's the sacrifices you make as a professional athlete to be successful and have that kind of 15 minutes in the ring. So, uh, thanks to Lockhart. Uh, who are your other big sponsors for that? Head Rush, Head Hayabusa. Rush. I got a Head Rush shirt too, so that's awesome. Vita Fight, Heavy Rope, The Gun Store. I think that's about it. Man. Yeah. Uh, big ups too to Hayabusa for coming out with an extremely white trash training gear called Kopeki. It's all made out of brown leather. It looks like knife fighters from the 1700s would wear this to spar. So I'm a big fan of it. I don't have any, but I think it's awesome. Um, and so now, you know, we're a little bit out and a uh, month after, your, uh, three weeks after your fight and um, the 145 pound division is heating up. Do you have any uh, any people that you would like to compete against? 
Yeah, I, I mean, there's a bunch of guys that I would like to fight. I would love to fight Leonard Garcia, uh, just Cub Swanson, Eric Cole, just guys who go in there to scrap, you know. The, the, uh, the 145 pound division is full of guys who, who, who don't stop. Their cardio is great, good stand up, good wrestling, good jiu jitsu. You know, it's still a little bit thin. There's not too many guys in the 140, in the 145 pound division, but you know, it's growing and there's a lot of top top level guys in the UFC at 145. So, you know, there's a bunch of good matchups for me. Yeah, I think um, I think the sky's the limit for Dustin. There's so many great matchups at 145, but one matchup that I think would be great, you know, surfing my computer yesterday, I came upon a little bit of an interview with Diego Nunes. I respect Diego Nunes a lot. Uh, he comes from Novo Niao, Andre Pedaneris. That's uh, old school Carlson Gracie guys, and uh, that's also the home of uh, UFC 145 pound champion Jose Aldo. Um, you know, in a highly respectful and uh, um, very mannerable and honorable way, uh, Nunez expressed some interest in uh, having a bow with Dustin based off the both guys' stand up being, um, you know, very explosive, very dynamic, and both guys interested in finishing fights. What do you think about a fight with Diego Nunes? Uh, man, I think a uh, fight of the night or knockout of the night is going to be the result of, of me and him getting in the cage. I think it's a great matchup, you know, we both fought the same night, so, in our last fight, so we'll be ready around the same time, you know, I know, I think I read he has an ankle injury, but nothing serious, you know, and, and uh, in a couple months, man, I'll, I'd love for that to happen, he's a great striker, his ground game's good, it's just a, it's just a great matchup, and for a guy of his caliber to even, to, to say my name, you know, wanting to fight me, is, is a compliment for me, you know, I love, I love that, I take this, I'd love to take this fight, you know, I'm ready to sign the papers as soon as I can get them in, in my hand. Yeah, you know, for us, it's not about uh, talking smack or insulting our opponents. As martial artists, we understand that without our opponents, there's no way that we can have the challenges we need to esteem ourselves to the level of fighters that we want to get to. So, um, you know, it's an honorable thing to have a guy of his caliber in the Novo Nyao team to challenge Dustin. And, you know, don't get it, don't get it wrong, just because we're from South Louisiana don't mean we ain't taking challenges. So... Um, yeah, for sure. We think it would be a great fight. Hook it up. Joe Silva, Dana White, whoever's watching, hook the fight up. Dustin's ready to go. We're back in hard sparring today. Um, we did a whole bunch of five-minute rounds. Dustin's no injuries. Let's do it. Let's get in the business. Let's Anything it, else? No. I mean, it's about it, you know. I want that fight. You know, I was, I kind of had it in the back of my head after I fought, and I kind of felt like, you know, a gut feeling like that was going to be my next fight. I even told Tim that. And then, you know, a couple days after I said that, he said he, he wants to fight me and it would be a good fight. So, man, let's do it. You know, let's get in there and tuck our chins and, and go to war. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be like in front of the skater, skating rink kind of fight. That's serious. Put it on the main card. Put it please. on the main card. All right, let's do it. Thanks for watching. Gladiators Academy of Lafayette. See you guys soon.